time it is. Marvin Devine. Hoover. Axel. And you know how we do. <laughs> Out. No, I know I'm going out. No, the new year is coming in. That's right. That's right. That's right. The new year is coming in and I'm going out. That's right. I had my, my dialysis was changed. So, you know, for the holidays, I go on different day, different schedule. So, you know, we can do what we want to do because I don't got no treatment. So I have a little more energy and all that kind of stuff. That's right. Girl. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. I don't know. I don't know about you, but I'm definitely going. Mm -mm. I'm not thinking about no phosphorus. I ain't thinking about no potassium. I ain't thinking about nothing else but getting my groove on. Ah, my party. My party. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Get with the quickness. Well, I, I don't know, but uh, I'll meet you there. I'll meet you there, okay? All right, I'll call an Uber or something like that. And I don't want to call accessoride. And I don't want to attack it. Like that. They got better cars, but I don't want to attack. Yeah, like that. Mm -mm. No, no, no. Uh, you know why? Because this is the Lisa Facts the Show giving you the 411 in a kidney world. Hello, everybody. How are you? Happy Sunday, happy holidays, happy uh season's greetings, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa. The whole kitten code. Boodle, that's right. 
at least Nolly, Don, everything. I hope your Christmas was excellent. I hope it was wonderful. I hope you were able to enjoy it and have a great, 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 great time. All right. I got a wonderful show for you tonight. Yes, I do. I got a man's man on this show tonight. That's right. He's a family man at that. He's a person that had a transplant for 33 years. Woo. I've met some people on dialysis a long time, and I've met people with a transplant for a long time, but this is it tonight. I think this is the biggest and the longest. How about that? Let me introduce him. His name is Kent Bressler. That's right. He's a retired He's, um, he's retired from Patterson, Patterson Health. He was an RN, right? He has a podcast called uh, Kidney Stories. Um, he's a, a living, related, transplant recipient of 33 years. And he is sponsored, his, his show and stuff is sponsored by Kidney Solutions. Man, let me let this warrior on the show. Welcome, Mr. Ken Bressler, transplant warrior. Welcome to the Lisa Baxter Show. Good evening. How are you? Alive and kicking. Alive and kicking. And better that I got such royalty on the show tonight. Please. 33 years is just a, an attempt to let people know that there's hope. That's all that is. Just a number. I have a friend, right, who's been going to, in August, be transplanted 50 years. So 33 is nothing. I was watching that podcast that you had of that with the uh, uh, the fella that had the 50-year um, transplant. And, I mean, that's no kicking or dropping a bucket. Some people don't last that long. So um, when we get, I, I got to find out what your secret and everything is to keeping it this long. Yeah, well, that's, yeah. that's a secret for everybody, right? That's the whole point. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> is it in a jar? I mean, is it, I mean, what is it in a book? You know, is it in a plan? Is it in a recipe? Is it in just belief? Well, you, but whatever it is, we want to hear about. You know, you know what it is. It's God's will. That's all there is to it. It's all. It's a God thing. You, know, we, you don't have a. We don't have any inkling of what when we have it. Finding a donor, that's one thing. But uh, keeping the kidney afterwards is a big another. That's what we we call it. A big another. There's no reason in the world to. Uh, to worry about having a transplant, it's taking care of it afterward. Amen. You ain't wrong. You ain't never lied. It takes work. It takes work for anything that you're doing with your health, Absolutely. and especially keeping a kidney. And I'm only four years in, so I, I, it takes work. It takes work, and I'm, I'm glad you're doing the work and you're still doing it. Yeah, yeah. So what? Let me ask you, what did you get for Christmas? Wow, I got so many things. I meant to pull some of this stuff out. One of the things I got is called the Prayer Blessing uh, Book. And wow. it has different scriptures and prayers in it. Um, years ago, I, my archbishop had gave us a, a prayer promise box. And it had a promise on one side and a scripture on the other side. And a prayer yeah. on the side. So, you know, there's so many books in the Bible. And it has a promise um, on the pages. You know what I mean? Yep. So that was one. And the, my, uh, I wanted a travel uh, planner that when you travel, you can organize your suitcase. And so I, I got that. I got some earbuds and stuff like that. Uh, even that scarf I was doing my skit with was one of one of my gifts. Um, some slippers and uh, a new a new blouse that's still in the bag over here. You know, so it was a little bit of this and that, but a, a blessing altogether. A nice meal, nice time with family. That was my gift. And life is, was my, one of my presents, too. What did you get since you're talking about that? Well, the most important thing that I got was uh, 
two of the people that I've been working with got transplanted the week before Christmas. Uh, Ooh, Monday, what a yeah. yeah. Wow. One, one had been waiting for roughly uh, six years and the other one uh, for two years. And uh, they're both doing very well. So I, <laughs> that's a big that's a big Christmas present for me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Seeing something wonderful happen to somebody that needed it or wanted it or, you know, prayed or desired it. that That's an excellent gift. And I ain't mad at you. That's true. <laughs> and, and your family is still doing well and they're alive. That That's a nice gift as well. That's yep. a nice gift as well. Now, let me ask you a question. Uh, how is it being an RN? I know you retired, but how was that being an RN? Well, I actually started out, uh, well, it was good. I, I enjoyed it. I, I did it for 42 years. So I had 20, 22 years with the Veterans Administration working with veterans, which was a, an honor and a, and a blessing. And then I had 20 years at a private institution, so I got to look at the other side. Uh, and so yeah, my career my career was uh, based on my transplant, actually. Uh, had I not had that transplant, I wouldn't be where I am today. And besides that, I wouldn't have the friends and the friendships that I've gained uh, and, and the willingness to be able to help others uh, get through this process. It's a long journey, but those journeys always pay off if you stay with it. Wow. Well, I know that's right. It, it really does pay off, you know, it really does pay off. So what was the best thing about being the nurse or would you say, and even the hardest thing, about um, your nurse journey, your nursing journey? The hardest thing I think all in all was the shift work. That was the hardest, you know, those folks that work nights and uh, we work, uh, when I was in the army, we worked 24 on, 48 off, but it was always different than that. It was always 48 hours on and 24 off if you were lucky. And so consequently, I think that was the hardest thing. But uh, as, as you, you cannot wear yourself out. And after I had the transplant, I tried to get into areas in nursing that would enhance not only my career, uh, but keep me from getting infections. Uh, working in intensive care and ERs, uh, it's tough. It's, it's, uh, it's a, a, an environment that is fraught with danger, even when you're very protective and know what you're doing. Uh, it, you know, so that's, Essentially, that's what it, it and nursing is a, is an honorable profession because it's all, always about helping people. It's not about uh, numbers. It's not about anything but helping people. And that's, I guess, the reason I went into it. So that's what brought you to that career. Um, you wanted to help people. <clears throat> yeah, I, you know, originally I started out as an EMT uh, in a small, uh, small town in uh, Nebraska. And then I went in and became a, an x-ray technician and a laboratory technician and got drafted. And after I came out, I went to nursing school. So that was pretty well planned out for me. I knew what I wanted to do, fortunately. And this uh, kidney transplant, my kidney disease, I have FSGS. Uh, it was quite a, it's quite a shock when I found out about it because the doctor told me, you know, we don't have a cure for this. And the story that I tell a lot, and I've told it to a lot of my close friends, including James Myers, we talk quite a bit about just about kidney transplants. He has PKD, I have FSGS, and neither one of them has a cure. And as you know, transplants are the cure. But I remember being biopsied 1985 by a brilliant nephrologist who's still practicing in San Antonio. His name was Perry Mulgrew. <clears throat> and after he did the biopsy, my wife and I went to his office in downtown San Antonio. I remember walking into this office and it was just really busy. I mean, he had people coming out, jumping out of the windows and out the doors. And we sat in the hallway and he came out of the office and came and sat between us. And uh, he said, uh, and I got some, he put my, his hand on my wife's shoulder and she said, listen, I want you to Pay very close attention here because I've got I've got some rough news for both of you. And I he said, Kent, you've got a an illness that we know very little about. It's called FSGS. And uh, I I had never heard of it before. And I knew it was kidney disease. And I asked him, Well, 
what's the prognosis? And he said, well, I think what I would like to have you do is <clears throat> get a transplant. I think you should be thinking about a transplant because you won't do well on dialysis. I know you too well. And uh, so consequently, uh, I had two brothers and both of my brothers matched. One of them matched closer and uh, he didn't have any children. He had just gotten married. My youngest brother, Kerry, had uh, two kids already. And so my brother Kip said, no, nope, I'm going to do this. So he gave me a kidney in 1987 and I still have it and it's still working and we're both doing very well. Matter of fact, he just recovered from COVID, if you want to know about that. So that was that was my story in a nutshell. How I brother, remember. brother, brother. It was three of y'all, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. A yeah. brother to brother transplant. Yeah. Wow. Did one of my podcasts, did one of my podcasts uh on the odd man out. Uh, and that was my brother Kerry. He thought he was gonna be the donor. He really did. He he wanted to be the donor real bad. But as it worked out, Kip, my other brother was able to able to do that and he didn't have any children so he, they worked it out amongst themselves i was too sick i can tell you that this the, you know kidney disease at stage four my creatinine was 17 when i went for surgery and uh, that's that's a that's a lights out they didn't have gfr back then um, it was still in the stone age my brother ended up having a having a uh, surgery I call it the surgery from hell. They did a, a ventral cut in his side and took the, a rib and a half out to get his kidney out. Nowadays Woo. they just do it. Yeah. But he was very, he's, he was very, now. yeah, that's a, yeah, really. And uh, it's, it's a real breeze. It's not fun and it's dangerous. It's still dangerous, but he really had a difficult time. Got a, a small infection after wound, after, uh, after surgery and the wound and, but he did well. He took it real well, and he's. We've been really close ever since. Wow. Well, he really wanted to save you. I'm sure. He really wanted to save you. I mean, I was like that. We were. My siblings and I were very close too, and and we all would have gave each other a kidney. We just didn't know we was all going to have practically have polycystic kidney disease ourselves. But my husband, he was a perfect match, and I did 12 years of dialysis. He did not want to see me on it any longer. And I'm like, somebody got to stay healthy in this family. We're the bachelors and we got to stay healthy. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know the, yeah. And uh, my maiden name is Crossland. So, you know, the Crossland was going through some stuff. We wanted the bachelors, you know, to stay a little bit on the healthier side, but all of us to be healthy. But, you but, know, he ended up not being able to give me the kidney. I got it from a stranger later after he passed away, you know, because sure. of cancer. I never even made the list. I never even went on the list. I knew when I left after uh, two years, uh, Dr. Mulgrew nursed me along for two years. He got me uh, through a lot and and uh, I had a lot of gout activity. I had a lot of headaches, you know, migraine headaches and uh, infections and stuff like that. But eventually after the transplant, it's been relatively uh, smooth sailing. I've had no rejection episodes and and uh, but I've had I've had a had a stent put in my heart and then I had an aneurysm in my aorta, which was repaired endoscopically, which is major, major surgery. But everything in God's will. And, and uh, I'm here doing what I'm doing now. Well, gout is no joke. I, I dealt with gout, bone disease, gum Coo. disease, please. You know what I mean? So that's going to be very, very painful. You know, and the lumbar disc issues, Shondo. That's what I'm going to say about that. Koboshe, Shondo. You know, so, all right, Um, let me let me see. You're a family man. Has this affected your family in any way, sir? I've been married 51 years. I think it probably affected it in some way. I know. What? I know. Yes. <laughs> woo, woo. <laughs> Congratulations on the anniversaries. You know what I mean? <laughs> all my friends. <laughs> All my friends yeah, tell me. All my friends tell me. I, I, they don't know how she did it, and I really don't either. <laughs> this woman, this she woman is, me. is. Oh yeah, she's she's a trooper. Every, every time we turned around, we've had a, a bump in the road. She's always been bouncing with me. You know, it's, she never oh, got God. out of the car. We never changed lanes. It, it's it's always been uh, 
we go everywhere together. It's we started out when we were, we were kids. I, I knew her from the third grade on and started dating when we were <laughs> started. Yeah, started dating when we were probably in eighth or ninth grade and, and uh, married the year after we got to high school. So poor things been stuck with me. <laughs> wow. Love is in the air. Doves is all around. Come on now. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I've had the. I've been blessed with the, a woman that understands me because that's what it took. I think I know her pretty well. And uh, God God works in strange ways. She's been extremely healthy. She's had no no touches in life that uh, have been, you know, oh. no cancers, no uh, no major, major problems. When I've had one thing after another, but we prevailed because I think our faith is uh, is probably the most important thing about it. Uh, you that findeth a wife findeth a good thing, and it and it, and the Bible also say uh, dwell with your uh, you know your wife according to understanding. So you understand her, and apparently she understands you too. And you know y'all 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 did the vow thing, and and you took it serious, and you're still dealing with it and doing it. So that's a you know blessing what? right there. We had uh, two children, Gretchen and Celeste, uh, both girls. They're just uh, uh, bus with four grandchildren. And fortunately, you know, the, the biggest thing about this disease process that I have is that it it can come back. It, it can attack the kidney, the transplanted kidney. It doesn't uh, go away just because you had a transplant. It sticks around. And if it chooses to, it can go ahead and, and attack the kidney. And uh, really, really, it's a tough decision. Uh, back then, you know, my brother could have very well had it and we not, didn't even know about it. Both of them could have. Fortunately, they didn't. And fortunately, it hasn't attacked my kidney. So uh, my brother's kidney. Uh, that's a, that's uh, another debate whose kidney it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, who, who in your family had, had that kidney disease? Do you know? We, or? Absolutely. It, we're non-genetic. We're primary. The FSGS primary, in, in, in my case, it's... Uh, it's non-genetic. Nobody in my family had it. We had no kidney disease at all in my family. I was the blessed one. So consequently, going through the transplant, I do remember at, at that first interview when he told us the, the disease process and the outcome possibilities, he uh, told me we, we do a transplant. And, but I do want to tell you that this, this disease can come and, and, and attack the transplanted kidney. And so I lived with that. I've lived with that my whole life. It, you know, it, 33 years, you go uh, pretty much every th three to six months, depending on what nephrologist you get. And uh, every time you have your blood work drawn, you think, gee whiz, you know, I hope that creatinine is not creeping up and the FSGS hasn't returned. But after after a couple of years, three years, you just kind of like you, you go on, you know, you know, you're in the right lane and you just stay there. Stabilize, yep. you stabilize. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how was your pills and when you first started? I know I was taking like 19 in the morning and 16 at night. I'm four in the mm. morning and two at night. You had the wrong doctor. Oh, I just I I had <laughs> I didn't have near that many. I had prednisone. I had prednisone. That's a standard in most cases. And then I had a drug called uh, Sandimune or uh, cyclosporin. And it came in a little brown bottle. Um I think it was 50 milliliters in a bottle or I, I remember. And we would draw that out. We would draw that out with a plastic syringe. And then we would squirt it. You could do it in orange juice or you could put it in chocolate milk. I preferred the chocolate milk because it was really nasty tasting in the uh, in the orange juice. But I, do, I was on that before they developed the pill. Uh, Cyclosporin had just come out probably maybe two years before I was transplanted. So I've been on it my whole life, my whole transplanted life, and with prednisone, yeah. Well, it's good to see that a medication keep working because sometimes, you know, it it loses its punch sometimes when you had something so long sure. or the body gets used to it. You yeah. Know? But no, I have, to tell you the truth, I had great doctors, a great team, and I still do. 
you know, Mount Sinai and all of that. And even my nephrologist is wonderful. I mean, you know, they're great. But, you know, most of the pills that I'm telling you, some of them are like the baby aspirin and little things oh, like yeah. that. Oh, sure. And, you know, I didn't have diabetes and I had the little thing with the diabetes and I, the high blood pressure went away, it came back, you know, stuff like that. So the pills, you know, and, and one of them, are, though, some of them I count as is, is, is also a vitamin and a, uh, sure. a calcium. Sure. So sure. without those, is really, you know, the uh, cell set, the prednisone. Well, I have to still take Norvaz. I had to go back to Norvaz. Sure. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, yeah, I'll, and I can't I'm on, zip lie. I'm on, I I'm on those standards. You, you, you can't get away with it if you're a transplant patient or a kidney patient without taking pills. And it's usually a, a handful or maybe two handfuls. I'm kidding you when I said you should find another doctor. Don't do that. <laughs> But I, I'm, I'm on, yeah, I have, I'm on two, just two, two immunosuppressives. If you think about that, the sand immune and the prednisone right. and, uh, and, and the prednisone is like five milligrams probably could have been reduced nowadays in some of the, uh, programs, the transplant programs, they're not even, uh, starting people on it unless they come in, you know, you can, you can have a grave condition called Addison's disease if you're on it in, for a long period of time and then go off of it. You run the risk of having an Addison crisis, and I don't want one of those. So, whatever, you know. No, you don't. You don't. No. Well, well, with all the stuff that you deal with and you've been through, I know you are, are a man of faith, and you also have started a podcast. And I would love to know what your podcast is about and everything. <laughs> you I know, mean, I looked at it. I mean, I listened to it and it, everything. But tell them out there because they don't know. Well, it started with my daughter, Gretchen, my oldest daughter. She said, Dad, you know a lot about kidney disease and you, you love to talk. So why don't you do a podcast? I had no clue what a podcast was. So I was said, uh, this was pre-COVID and uh, not really close to when COVID started. And I, I, she got me a podcast to listen to. I listened to that and I was hooked. Then I run into Jason Nunez. Uh, Jason Nunez is a, a fellow that went through kidney solutions and got a transplant. He's also an amputee. He's, I think he's got a show here with, with, uh, with the urban league and he's just, he was just, uh, raring to go. He wanted me to do it. So we did it. And he's been my engineer and, uh, he's been, <laughs> you know what? He is, he's fantastic with that, with the audio. And, and that's all it is, is audio. Being Jonathan. No, I'm talking about Jason Nunez. Jonathan's oh, okay. another. He's another oh, character. You said yeah. he had a, something with urban, um, yeah. urban health. Um, yeah, too. He, I mean, maybe Steve. No, and I don't. You know, I just, yeah. I, you know, I brought the Lisa Batch show this week, so I don't know that. I usually know all of his shows, but lately I've been busy. I don't. Maybe I don't know that one. But, Jason uh, has a kid, six kidneys. Uh, oh, two, six, two oh yes, right. Yeah, yeah. I love yeah. that. And I love the title. Yeah, and Jonathan. But anyway, Jonathan's been a big help too. Uh, there's you talked there's about no, him all the time. This is the first time I'm hearing about Jason, so it threw me a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Jason, Jason, and Jonathan. I call him the. You know, if I got Jonathan on the phone, I might call him Jason. If I got Jason on, I might call him brother. <laughs> and my so uncle that's, Jim. You mentioned my uncle Jim, yeah, so I ain't yeah. mad at you. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. hey, Jim and Jim, Jim and I are. I I consider him a really really close friend, and and we've. Uh, scratch each other's back and we've argued about this and that about but in general we uh we believe that the patient's what we work with we're not working with kidney disease and we're not working with you know laws and rules and regulations and docs we're working with patients and when we you lose that focus if you if you forget about what you're working on working for the patient and with the patient and allowing them to make their decisions they're the boss if you lose that concept you i think in my end of it, I think I would I would have to stop if I would ever lose that that focus. It's not about money and it's not about it's about volunteerism. It's about giving back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're definitely giving back. I mean, you're putting the stories out there and that's what's important because the those testimony and stories change many people's lives. This is why I do what I've been doing for almost 10 years now. And um and so many others, you know what I mean? And the, and new new podcasts and new shows are coming up, even new networks and some of the uh, 
the places that have been around a long time notice that these things are so needed that they're even doing them too. More sure. So, so, sure. so it, sure. it, it, it's, a, it's a blooming thing that needed to be done and I'm just glad it caught fire. You know what well, I mean? Some, somebody's got to do it because there's too many people out there. There's 30 million that don't even know they have this disease. So, on, say that. You know, yeah. And, and all in all, when you, there's room for everybody. And the more you can expose someone to the population, the more chance you have of getting a, a transplant. And I, and as you know, until we talked earlier, most, yeah. we try to, we try to work for preemptive transplant as best we can. We would like to take somebody and get them transplanted before, help them get transplanted before they ever go on dialysis. And uh, that I think we've had some some good success with that. And that's our focus. But we never say no to anybody. If I get somebody been on dialysis like you, five, I have a gal that's been on for 11. I'll work with her just as hard as I will with uh, someone who's just coming on and just got stage three. It's all in, it's all in saying, okay, you're the boss. And here's what we do. You can jump on board and then we'll just make it better as we go. So Some, yeah. sometimes, uh, you know, so many people and you know, they have stories, but some people are shy to tell the stories oh, yeah. scared, or embarrassed to tell a story. I mean, I've been after my sister for years. I've been after my nephew that, and that's in the room over there. I've been after his brother, but I did get his sister and brother. So out of five of them, I got, I got, I got two of them. And out of my other sister, two kids, I got both of them. So as long as I got somebody or somebody to give the story, but I like to go from different angles, you know what I mean? From the doctor, from the caregiver, you know, from the home attendant, from the person themselves, from the spouse, you know what I mean? And from the person with the resources, resources mean everything to me because it's terrible to be sick and you don't have any help or any family. Absolutely. So I believe Absolutely. in connecting you to uh, where you, what you need or what you need to go. So I'm always spouting out something about some kind of resources. And they think I'm crazy with that and deep, but I've been in that seat with dialysis and I've been in the seat with the transplant and I've been in the seat as a widow and a person that's been through hell. So I, I would love somebody to tell me where a food pantry is or where I could get a job or make extra money or get a, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, something for me to go to school for free because I was on dialysis or I had a disability. You know what I mean? So that's what it's all about. So I think we connect all as a family and uh, you in the family now and you already know you're in the family. So I ain't got to tell you. <laughs> that's that you know what you're talking about what, what i call the social the social worker's heart everybody's got a heart but a social worker's got a big one and i mean you know you don't know the size of your heart until you help somebody and then then you catch fire when you've helped one you start helping another and another and another comes along and it never stops i mean somebody says well when are you going to retire I think I'll draw my last breath doing this. I'm hoping I can draw my last breath, a uh, healthy last breath working with kidney patients. That's, that's my hope. And uh, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of come to that so far. So I wanted to mention something else that I, I, I really believe in. I believe in support groups. I think that there are, Oh yeah. I think they're the, yeah, I think they're really the backbone of keeping a kidney or getting a kidney or, you know, working through a transplant itself. Uh, but the most important thing is, 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 is having a chance to meet with somebody. All right. And, and that's been through it, a mentor, someone that you can hook up with. Yeah. You know, I mean, you, there aren't many people in this world that can say, you know, I went through a transplant. We, we are in it. We, we see a lot of them. There are not very many of them. If you count them up, there's not very many of them. And the biggest thing is, is that those people are, are always searching, not the ones that are looking for a donor, but after they have a transplant, they're looking for something that will get them some longevity, right? And the first thing's prayer, and then everything else falls into, into place. But you can't do that without somebody who's knowledgeable, somebody who's been through it. The walk is the walk that talks the talk. And I, I think it's very important to... Very important to stress right from the get-go when a person calls me and says, I'd like some help. I said, well, you're the one. You're the boss. You, you're the one that's going to help. I'll, hear, I'll be here to guide you, but you're the one that's going to have to make all your decisions, and you're going to have to take care of yourself. 
This is not about me. It's about you. Yep. Yep. You feel, you feel more at ease when you when you are talking to somebody that understands what you're talking about. You know what I mean? You yeah. can say a lot of things to help the person, encourage the person, but when you both been through the same thing, it makes it a whole lot easier. Oh yeah, it's just like hugging hugging from afar. You you can always hug somebody. <laughs> you know, I mean, they they know it. And whether they're in Connecticut or, or they're in, in Dallas or San Antonio, or if they're right here in the community where they can give you a call or take you to lunch. Uh, it, the matter of the fact is, is that it's up to the person who needs, is in need to take care of themselves and do, do the searching. It's not up to Kidney Solutions or the man on the street, Steve, or you or anybody. It's not up to them. It's up to the person who needs it. They have to take full control. They have to be in charge. You can teach a man to fish, but I mean, if he doesn't want to fish, you can't make him fish. But when he gets hungry, trust me, he'll start fishing. And you just you hope he can, I mean? you just hope he can catch some, right? Yeah, if it's some, if it's some <laughs> fish still in that lake, I hope it's still some in the water. You know what I mean? <laughs> I My ain't wife. mad at you. I, <laughs> you got jokes. I ain't mad at you. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Listen, I ain't hardly <laughs> mad at you. Um, is there any um on any website? Or uh, any number or email people could get in touch with you if they uh, wanted to hear your podcast or speak to you or be referred to the group or or the solutions that you have, you know, the transplant. Solutions. Yeah, it, it's been flashing across the bottom uh, of the screen. It's kidneysolutions.org, not .com, .org. If you go okay. there, everything, everything on that site will tell you. We have people... Uh, uh, who are waiting for uh, to find a donor? Their their pictures are up. Uh, we've had some video conferences with them. Uh, they get a they will get a, a flyer. They'll get fifty free flyers. Five of them are laminated so they can put up in their community and around. And then they get the the uh, the email of the flyer itself so they can send it out to as many people as they want to. And it's free. There's no copyright on it. It's all free. Uh, that's essentially what what how we do that. But you go to kidneysolutions.org and it has a link directly to the podcast. And I I got to say I was very fortunate. I had my 50th podcast uh, last week. I think that's the one you listen to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that and, and then and then we what we do is try to make sure that. You get a chance to use the phone number eight, three, zero. 285-2140. And uh, that's my my personal uh, my personal phone. And uh, you can call it at three in the morning. No chances are I won't answer it, but you leave a message and I'll get back to you. Well, that's wonderful. That's what I'm talking about. And that's that's really what it's all about. I mean, I don't get paid to do this either. I do it from the bottom of my heart. I mean, a widow always need a little change, a little money, but I got a new job coming up that was part-time is going to become full-time. Wow. And the old job that I had as a social worker for 25 years is uh, I'm going to, uh, you know, it's about to end. So I thank God for keeping his word and his promise and being hired for this new job that understand my situation with what I deal with. You know, you got some jobs that don't understand or care about nothing that you deal with. This one actually deal with kidney and cancer patients. So it's not like they don't know if I, you know, they can prove that I'm telling the truth. I put it out there like that. Well, I'm, um, I, is, I, 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 I'm praying that everything that you do now in this new job uh, brings glory. I don't think there's any reason for you to fear. You have the knowledge that, uh, You've been, you de you're a warrior. So warriors, they get it. All right. So just apply your warrior status and uh, be humble and, and uh, you, you'll have it made. Humility will, will bring you through. Well, I'm definitely humble. Definitely humble. And I'll be working very hard in the community. And I've, that's what I always did anyway, as a volunteer, even as a social worker. Every, work, every place I live and work, I have worked in the community and know the community and get to know the community. And anybody out there, uh, that's a good thing to do because it, it, it brings more awareness. 
and it brings more attention to what you're trying to do if you did need a transplant and it brings more awareness to people to be able to deal with dialysis and, and it's just accepted a little bit better and a little more it's a hard pill sure. to swallow though if, if you go is. if you go back and if we could just take a back step about about our support groups i have two of them one one is on a monday yeah. evening yeah, one, one of them is on a Monday evening at six o'clock. These are all central times and it's on the website. And that's for kidney patients who are looking or have been transplanted. Uh, it's an all around support group. And uh, we will take all takers. All I need is for somebody to send me their email so I can invite them. I invite strictly off of emails. And the second one is on Thursday night, which was the original one that actually got Kidney Solutions started uh was it's it's an what i call an all transplant group it's people who are looking for for uh kidneys and we have patients in there that have had been transplanted with kidney we have kidney pancreas we have liver we have lung patients who have been transplanted and three heart transplant patients who come uh, uh and it's all done virtually all right and uh that's i think those two those two times are, I think they're monumental. I think that's something that's growing right now. I had, I think we had 50, 56 invites the other day. Now, not all 56 oh. come, all right? Not all 56 come, but I'll tell you what, they have the potential, they, and they can come and go, okay? And and can I get a shameless plug in here? Is it okay? That plug. Shame it, okay. go ahead. All right, so there are two organizations the first one is the American Association of Kidney Patients, AAKP. And uh, I would like you to consider that organization and National Kidney Foundation. I would hope that you could become a member of both of those. If Whether you're looking for a, a, a kidney transplant, whether you've had one, uh, or if you're a donor, a family member, someone who is working with kidney patients, we I encourage you to sign up. It's free. It's free at the AAKP. And they do a lot of things. AKP is a, a national organization that works with patients. It's all about kidney patients. It's all about protecting people on dialysis, protecting kidney patients for transplants. They're advocates for just about everything that involves kidney patients. And NKF is similar, but AAKP is more, I think, more focused uh, uh, in the long run, they've been around since 1969. NKF, again, it is a wonderful organization. I've been able to be passed on through their organization to, to uh, be part of the DOD. I've been a, a peer mentor for DOD uh, and, and, uh, and PCORI, and uh, a peer mentor through them. And uh, so there are lots of things you can get involved in. In both of those organizations, I encourage you to go ahead and sign up. That's my shameless plug. Well, that's all right, because I always put stuff up about them. I also belong to both of them, ESRD uh, Network, Donors Network, yes. Polycystic Kidney Foundation. You know what I mean? So um, yeah. I talk about uh, what CKD champions, remember yeah. me, and for yeah. kidney's sake. There's so many out there. And yep. so many want to help people and want people to be more involved. I mean, they have dinners, they have celebrations. Uh, matter of fact, I just got my AAKP uh, thing for uh, the mentors because um, I'm already a, an ambassador, but I wanted to do the thing with the mentors since I've I've done it before, so I wanted to do it again. You know, so I ain't mad at you. You know <laughs> what I mean? It, it, it's a, <laughs> You I can't, try to encourage them to get involved in this stuff. You, you can't yeah. make it up. Once you they can. taste it, they'll love it because they even have support groups over the phone. They do yeah. Zoom support groups and um, what's that? WebEx support group. Yeah. There's just so much out there. It's always a way you can get into it. I don't care. There's no way you don't have to get into it because there's always a many, million ways to get into it. So take your time, but jump in. You're going to love it once you do it. Another They're not going to be able to drag you away. That's right. right. Another, another, yeah, another organization. If you have FSGS, is uh, Nefcure, N E P H C U R E, Nefcure, and that organization is, deals strictly with uh, trying to find a, a, a treatments and uh, 
maybe hopefully sometime to be able to find a cure for FSGS. It focuses specifically on FSGS, which is a rare, which is a rare disease. If you know the truth, it's classified as a rare kidney disease. Is there Less any symptoms for that? Any symptoms for that disease? No. None. Okay. The best, the, the best way to for me to to describe in my mind through experience, and uh, I think it's in the literature. It'll tell you that if you want to know whether you got kidney disease, if you have high blood pressure plus protein in your urine, you need to have it checked out. All oh, right? Of course. No one, yeah, no one, no one one should one. have. That's right, and that's generally what happens with uh, with uh, uh, FSGS and any of the other uh, nephrotic syndromes. You have you have a spilling of protein in your urine sometimes, and then some microscopic blood. So you can you can find it early on, and that's what we hope is that we look at oh, focusing too. on 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 early diagnosis so that we can get people in a preemptive mode to get them transplanted before they have to go on dialysis. That's the mindset we're trying to generate. Yeah, get tested. Know your family history. You know what I mean? You know, yep. find out. You know yep. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you you have no you have no obligation to anybody but yourself, right? It right. doesn't you're I'll, not I'll you're, yeah, you're not gonna it's have a headache and you're not gonna, you know, it, it, at a simple urine test, a five dollar urine test will tell you whether you have nephrotic syndrome or not. If your kidneys are not functioning properly, they'll they'll get rid of protein, and that shit will show up in protein will show up in your urine, and that's that's the first sign. And you go find somebody then that'll take care of that. They won't just say, "Well, let's just watch this." That's not what we want to do in kidney disease. We don't want to watch. We want to find out what's causing it instantly. No waiting. No more waiting. You're telling the truth. Alport syndrome was another one that yes. I had put up there. Yes, ma'am. You know, but yeah. um, I, I had somebody that I knew uh, recently that had that, and I was a little disturbed because it was a baby. Yeah, but, IG, um, IG, IGA nephropathy. Uh, 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 yeah. Mit, yeah. Uh, there's a lots, of, lots of nephrotic syndrome kidney diseases. It's not just one disease. It's a multitude of diseases, including PKD. I'm sure. I saw a book with a lot of them in there and it blew my mind. And oh. this was like years ago, years ago. Now, if you had somebody out there that was dealing with, uh, they're scared because they just got a transplant and they weren't about it failing. And you had all of these years in the bank. What would you say to them to encourage them or anybody else out there either on the list or somebody that may be had in a few years? I think probably the most important thing about it is don't become a numbers person. Your kidney function is relatively easy to monitor. And if you take a account and go in and see your doctor on a regular basis and you, you know, maintain your, a, a low sodium diet, keep your blood pressure under control. If you're doing all those things after you've had a transplant, they're going to be able to monitor it. And the best thing I can tell you is if you do reject, there's treatment for it. Okay. Rejection is not a death sentence and you're not going to lose the kidney. If you reject, there are treatments for it. Yes. Some people do. Some people lose it within 24 to 48 hours after being transplanted. But overall, in general, the average lifespan of a transplant is 20 years. So give or take, your most important aspect is make sure you maintain good contact with your doctor and get your blood test, get your blood work done so you can monitor the function of the kidney. GFR, creatinine, creatinine clearance, 24-hour urines. Those kinds of things are important. Early on, they get less important as you get farther out. But the most important thing is that contact with that doctor and the realization there's treatment if you have signs of rejection. Wow. Well, who would you give a shout out to? Who's that wonderful person or group of people that you want to give that special, special shout out to? Too many. I can't do that. I, I, that my it'd break my heart if I forgot somebody. I, I will understand. tell you. I I will tell you one person who I I'm indebted to, and that's Perry Mulgrew, the doctor in I, San Antonio. Perry Mulgrew. I'm indebted uh, to him. Yeah, because he had the courage to tell me. Get a transplant. We'll we'll work you through a transplant, and and let's get that done, and let's get it done soon. All right, 
And that's, I'm hoping in my lifetime, I see that change in that milieu within the uh, uh, nephrology community, that that becomes the penchant. Let's transplant. Let's work towards transplant. First, dialysis second. Not saying you don't need dialysis, not what I'm saying at all, because we know there are in acute kidney injury, several disease processes that people don't even realize they need a transplant. They don't get that information early on because they're so far advanced. Not talking about that. I'm talking about the person with an early diagnosis of kidney disease. Let's go after a transplant. Let's do that. Let's get rid of the fear of transplant and let's get rid of the fear of finding a donor. There's thousands of people out there helping people uh, try, to find, uh, try to find donors. They're there. Actually, I want more people to start doing that. I want more people to get in this game. Uh, the more, the better. Oh, yeah. Come on. Come on. Good there's problem. plenty of room. Yeah, there's yeah. plenty. Of Those Brown brothers, uh, anybody, uh, that you, Steve, uh, everybody, Love everybody has brothers. a That's right. Everybody has a position in this because it's fighting kidney disease. We want to destroy it before it destroys everybody. It's horrible. It's killing on it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You know it's horrible. You you tell me what's good about kidney disease. Tell me one thing that's good about kidney disease. You said one thing good about it. Yeah, one good thing about having kidney disease. I can't think of any. I've I've been no, so, I can't think of life. any. No. Well, the only good thing I could say, not for kidney disease, but I thank God for dialysis because even though you don't be wanting to be bothered to go. I thank God that they had a machine that you can go. And even though you might not want to take all those pills, Absolutely. thank God there's a transplant out there you can get and there's pills. So there's something to be grateful for regardless. How about that? Mm -mm -mm. Yes, yes, yes. You know, so I'm about to end the show. Is there anything we missed or didn't say? I let us go over a little bit because you know, Steve didn't Just have no show tonight. The and veteran, I wanted to get this out here. The one thing I, I failed to talk about was the veteran population with kidney disease. Veterans are most important things, I think, in our, in our, uh, for, was a veteran, the reason we're here, right? Right. I mean, most people know how important having a good military is, but nobody knows how much suffering goes on after you get out and being able to, to work for 20 years with veterans and a veteran myself, all I can say is that we need to focus on their kidney their kidney programs and that's what aakp does they do it religiously and then i i want to give out one this i did forget this i've got several patients that i'm working with right now there's one i just want to give a shout out to who <laughs> is Lynn, linda denby she's been a if you want to find out who linda denby is why don't you just come on on the monday night support group you'll figure it out real quick She's a, she's a joy. And the opportunity to do this with you, it's not lost to me. I appreciate you a lot for letting me come on. Well, I appreciate you for accepting. And I thank Jonathan for grabbing you for me because I've been trying to get you for months. And he, he, just, he just did a one, two, three last week. I ain't mad at him. Because, you know, the person that was for today was last week and the other one that was supposed to have been there didn't. But you, God had that perfect order and it worked out just right, you know, just like mixing a cake. So I, I appreciate you for coming on and taking the time. I appreciate for what you do. Thank you to your wife, your two girls, and even the nephrologist that, that, that schooled you about what was going on. You two, know what I'm saying? And the Can brother that gave you the kidney, I yeah, don't like for that. And the fact right. that two of them want to give you a kidney. But uh, thank God uh, for the one. I hope your brother is all right, the one that have the COVID. I hope he did. you're going to welcome and say a prayer definitely. He was my donor. Yeah, he had his, he's over it now. It took him a, something like 25 days to get really solid out of it. So, yeah, he's doing okay. Yeah, he's well, doing fine. There's one kidney, I'm glad, because I know we can live off one kidney. Yeah, he's doing well. Yeah, he's doing well. well excellent. He's and still not as good. Not as still is not good looking as I am, but he's he's getting along. <laughs> well, all the love is in the family. How about that? <laughs> all the looks and the love is in the family. It's in the blood. It's in the genes. Well, thank you again. You have an excellent night. Get some rest. Uh, enjoy the holiday. I'll see you next year. What they be saying? Yes, you know, right. I see you. I like that. 
I'll see you next year. And uh, be easy. Take it easy. V for victory. All right. Thank you very much, Lisa. You're so welcome, sir. Excellent job. Fantabulous. Bless your life. Good night. Wow. What can I tell you? What can I tell you? Was that wonderful? Great. Didn't I not tell you that it was going to be fantabulous? Yes, it was. Well, um, next week I have uh, Miss Thelma Warner. Mm -hmm. She's going to be on the list of the show. And I got excellent January lineup. What I wanted to uh, tell you, uh, Abel Ride, um, phone number is 516. 228 4000 it's hard to see in this light okay accessory ride is 8877337217 this is transportation for people that have a disability it doesn't have to just be dialysis but any type of disability and you live in new york but if you don't live in new york everybody have a paratransit so look it up even if you were traveling they will take you around for just a little bit of money you can go anywhere don't forget uh, your girl told you all right the aj project 407 630-9801. I had his mother on the show. Her son had passed away and uh, she does a, a foundation and a thing and uh, a fundraiser for her son's memory to help other people. Okay. Um, the uh, Cancer Society 212-492-8400. Uh, I will also put this in the feed. All right. And let me see here. The Denise, uh, the Dennis Bludgeon Foundation, 917-699-6714. All of these foundations and stuff is just out there for you, a resource for you. All right. So God bless. Happy New Year. See you next year. Keep it blessed. Keep it good. Keep it wonderful. I love you. Thank you. For